Hey guys, so we are back on the Superman today. So we're gonna to do a little bit of uh, behind the scenes action, I guess, in that uh, we're just gonna rip out this old motor so we can get things ready for that new motor to go in the car. But while we've got this motor out, you know, because we're not gonna use this bottom end anymore, we might as well pop a rod and piston out of it. And I do wanna do a bit of a uh, research project in seeing what the clearances are like on that rod with the ARP rod bolt torqued up to full stretch or just torqued up to spec. I wanna see if there's actually a bit of a difference there. A few people have said, you need to resize the rods, you know, when you change rod bolts. I think we've had this conversation before, but you know, I wanna do an actual scientific test and see if there is much difference involved in, uh, yeah, torquing it up or, you know, doing it to the full rod bolt stretch. Does it change the actual, inside of the big end of the rod. I guess we will find out. But first, let's get this engine out and see what we're dealing with. a bit of shift direction. So now that we've got the engine out, it is time to recover a few parts out of this engine so we can use them in the other engine. Namely the uh, head studs, we're gonna reuse all these ARP head studs. Uh, we're gonna reuse the lifters and the cam, but we have to actually have a good look at them, make sure there's no damage from where the, uh, when the valves impacted the pistons, where they, you know, made any damage on the cam or lifters. We'll, inspect them very carefully 
And obviously the sump, we want to reuse that because this one's got the turbo drain back on it. And these tough mounts, we want to get the, uh, the old tough mounts off it and reuse them on our other engine as well. So, a few things to grab. With the power of Ryobi, it should be pretty easy. Look at that. Now I can see why these um, bolts didn't seal properly. This sealant never really went off. I actually watched another L67 video and they don't actually use the thread sealant. What they do is they wrap them in thread tape and the thread tape they reckon seals it up beautifully. So I think that's what we'll do when we put them back in the other engine. Because yeah, this um, thread sealant, it was shit. So in the last episode of the Super Mang, we uh, talked about the air conditioning compressor and how it mounted to the engine. Now on the VT engine, which is what this mount is, it doesn't use that at all. It mounts directly to the block. But on the VS style, which is what this mount is and what suits the VN Commodore, you can see it's a fair bit different. So the air conditioning compressor actually attaches to the mount and the mount goes straight there on the side of the motor and all is good with the world. So what we'll do is transfer this tough mount over to here. We'll get keen to clean this up and uh, it'll be nice and clean and we can bolt it to the other motor which is going into the VN. So if you watched the last episode, you'll know that I worked out a nice method of pulling out the cams or putting them in and pulling them out. So we just use a, a socket of the right dimensions down the center of the cam and then we just use it to oops, ugh, lift it out. So just got to be a little bit gentle, kind of line it up with each journal as you go. difficult at the moment. Got to get it centered properly. shaft. I mean I can't see any obvious damage but yeah we'll just have a good look through it make sure none of the lobes have got dents in them or anything like that but uh, I'm pretty sure it'll be okay. Okay so we've got cam out, lifters out, all our studs out so we're pretty much ready to flip this over and make a massive mess. That's all right, can will clean it up later. But we'll get the sump off this thing and uh, we can use the sump and our fancy sump gasket on the other engine. And then we can pop one of these rods and pistons out. That's the plan. All right. Water! Yay.
little lost bolt. So we have got just about everything out of this engine that we need to get. So lifters, cam, head studs, all that stuff. We'll reuse it all in the other engine. But we still have the rod bolts obviously in here, but we've got a new set as well. We can reuse them, but you know, what we'll do is uh, we'll whip these out and we'll do our measuring exercise. Well, that was the plan anyway, but uh, I haven't been able to get hold of a rod bolt stretch gauge today. Um, hopefully I can get one tomorrow, but anyway, I'll whip out the rods and pistons. We'll have a look at the bearings, see if there's any abnormal wear, but um, I'm hoping it should be all pretty sweet. So let's get to work. Let's have a look. Okay, so. Wow. That actually doesn't look too flash at all. Um, I don't know if it's got anything to do with me changing the rod bolts or whether it's just the fact that this engine had like 400,000 Ks. But uh, yeah, that is not a great bearing. As you can see, the rods are not too bad. Maybe a little bit thin in this area, but still got plenty of beef up through there. Not a bad rod at all. But yeah, the bearings, certainly on this first one, are not flash at all. No bueno. Yeah, it's not real flash. Ugh. Lovely. The other side of the bearing obviously is not going to be any better. They never are. Yeah. Wow. This is starting to make me think we, uh, we need to pull the rods at least the caps off the other rods and have a look and see if the bearings are any good. Uh, they don't really want to do it, but you know, sometimes you kind of got to. Because, you know, when you replace bearings, then it's like, oh, we'll do the bearings. Oh, we'll do the rings. Oh, you might as well do a hone. But if you're going to do all that shit bodily in the garage, you might as well pull it all down and send it to the machine shop and get it done properly and then if you're doing it properly you might as well put rods and pistons in it and then four thousand dollars later you might have a bottom end <sighs> fun so keen-eyed viewers have probably noticed that these are arp 2000 bolts you're probably wondering what the difference is and that is that they have a higher yield strength than uh, say your normal ARP bolts. So normal ARP bolts, a good thing, but you know, they're limited to like 180,000 whatever's it is that they use to, uh, I think that's the shear strength of the, the bolt, pounds of force maybe. Uh, but yeah, 180,000 where ARP 2000 is like 200,000. And then they do another one with a new material, which the name escapes me right here at the moment. I'm sure someone will fill me in on the comment section. Um, that, uh, yeah, can do like 
40,000, something like that. It seems to be the new hotness. But yeah, wow, this bearing is not good either. Oh, it's terrible. Look at it. It's fucking terrible. Yeah, well. So obviously, you know, undoing these things, you can see me using a fair bit of force to undo them. So they are done up pretty tight. But ARP recommends that to do these up correctly, you put their, uh, their lubricant on the threads, their, their lubricant under the heads. And then you'll see there's a little divot at either end of the bolt and that's so you can put what they call a stretch gauge which we've mentioned a couple times you put the stretch gauge on and it measures how much stretch the bolt gets and they reckon that I think it's five or six hour stretch gives the correct amount of clamping force on the bolt without actually compromising the strength of the bolt of course if you stretch them too far the bolt becomes weaker and obviously it will fail eventually but to get the correct clamping force, yeah, they recommend using a stretch gauge to measure that. And I'll tell you, it is pretty much always more force than the actual torque specs of the engine. So I think, I, just off the top of my head, I think these were 50 foot pounds or something like that. Someone will correct me, I'm sure. But, um, you know, they're done up pretty bloody tight. And, you know, they take a bit of force to undo. Ugh. But, you know, to get the correct amount of stretch, maybe it's like 70 foot pounds. Who knows? But we will do a test of that when I can get hold of a gauge. But right now, we'll just work with what we got. <laughs> These bearings, they're hilarious. <laughs> Okay, so here's our new bottom end, so to speak. They reckon 180,000 Ks. I'm gonna pull off cap number six right now. These have just got standard rod bolts, so. I'll undo this number six cap. We'll see what we're playing with. Hopefully the bearings are good. So if they're not good, then I'm scared. All right, one bolt, two bolt. All right, here we go. It's not terrible. I mean, I wouldn't call that mint, but it's not terrible. Not terrible at all. It's got a couple lines in it. Just kind of feel them with your fingernail. So yeah, not great, but the journal looks good. So maybe, maybe we slap a fresh set of bearings in it put the rod bolts in it and just send it. Because, uh, yeah, like I said, they're not terrible, but yeah, I'm not sure I'd be super happy to just send it with that, but uh, <laughs> he says after he sent it with those other bearings, which were terrible. But anyway, it is what it is. So um, I might check another one, see what it looks like. We'll go from there. All right. Oop. Bearing's still there. Okay. That one's probably slightly worse. Certainly nowhere near as bad as the other ones, but uh, yeah, just. 
Oh, what's going on there? Crank's actually got a mark on it. That sucks. So this is what happens. You go looking, you find stuff. You don't want to find stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. Well, that's actually a bit of a pain in the balls. Because <sighs> we're going to have to linish that crank. There's no way we can send it with a crank like that. It needs a linish. Fuck. So, here's where we're at. This is the old engine. Obviously, the bearings were shagged. So, um, yeah, we definitely wouldn't have uh, sent it again with those. But then, people, you got in my head. You asked me to check the bearings in this. And so I went and had a look. And I hate looking. And this is why I hate looking, because you find things. And you don't want to find things. But, yeah. And you know what? I could have put the rod bolts in that, new rod bolts in that, without even looking at the bearings and sent it, and I bet you it would have lived 100,000 Ks, easy, no worries. But now I know, I know. It means I'm gonna have to pull the crank out and get it linished. I might be able to, I don't know, give it a bit of emery and, you know, maybe give it a little clean up, but I'm just, I'm not happy. Not happy, Jan. So, I'm gonna have to come up with a result for this. So new bearings is a minimum. Do we pull the crank out and send it off for linishing? Maybe. Do we put new rings in it then? Do we hone it then? Where does it stop? I don't know. But you're going to see it all on future episodes of Carnage.